Hi, this is Jen from Jen's Ink Spot, and today I'm going to show you how to make a double gate fold card, and this one I'm making a flamingo card. Cards with a fun fold are always fun to receive. This one closes, and you can see how the leaves, they tuck behind each other to kind of create a lock so that it'll stay closed. And then when you open it, the recipient finds a nice surprise on the inside. The fun thing about this card is it can also easily stand up for display. Each of the panels can be decorated on the back side if you'd like. I chose just to decorate the parts that you would see when it was completely folded. You will need a piece of cardstock that measures 12 by 5 and a half inches. So if you use one 12 by 12 sheet, you will be able to get two cards out of that one sheet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to score and I'm using a score pal at the two and the four inch lines. Then I'm going to turn the cardstock around and score again at the two and the four inch marks. Or if you use a full size scoreboard, you could score at two, four, eight, and ten inch marks. Because the inside of the card is a standard A2 size card front, it'll fit in a standard A2 size envelope. Now what I'm going to do is cut the diagonal pieces off of my cardstock. On each end, I'm going to make a mark with a pencil, and it's going to be two and three fourths down on each end. And then what I'm going to do is cut the diagonal from where I have scored the four inch line and the eight inch line. This is where I'm now going to line up where I marked with my pencil to the top of my scored line, which is the four inch line, and I'm going to cut the diagonal off of both sides of my cardstock. When I finish, this is what my card front will look like, and here's the two diagonal pieces that I just cut off, and I'm going to use those now to cut some white pieces to exactly the same size. So I'm going to cut these pieces for both sides. You could use the green piece, but I want them both to be white. And when I'm done, I'll have two pieces to use on my card front later. I'm going to go ahead now and fold all the creases that we scored earlier to make sure our card fits together nicely. And this is what it should look like when we're finished with that step. Those diagonal pieces that we cut off before are going to go on the outside of the card and wrap on the inside part of the flap, and they'll go one on each side. The white pieces I have not scored yet because I want them to be flat for when I stamp the border so that they won't have that crease in them. I'm going to choose a stamp from the Tropically Yours Good Vibes Border Stamp Set from Katherine Pooler's Stamp of Approval Collection. And I've decided to go with a basket weave stamp because I like how it interlocks easily when you're repeatedly stamping the image. I'm going to place the block on one of these grid acrylic blocks from Katherine Pooler. I love it. It has a nice hand grip on the sides. And I love the guides that are printed on it to help me line up my border stamps. I love being able to see through it and just to know that I'm stamping exactly where I want things to be. I am stamping in black ink because I love the pop of black against all the bright colors. Or maybe I should say I like the bright colors against the pop of black. It just brings a nice design to the card. I'm stamping this repeatedly until I get to the very top. And as you can see again, it's very, very easy to line up this border stamp. Now that I have each side stamped, I'm going to score each one at the two inch mark and I'm going to flip the first one over so that it's easier to line up at the top of my scoreboard. Score it two inches and then I'm going to score the second one as well. I lined up where I wanted my piece to be and now I'm going to use my ATG gun to put adhesive just on the biggest part of the panel because I want to be able to close my card and then add adhesive on the second part of the panels. Once I have the first part adhered, then I'm going to add adhesive to the little part that's left. I'm going to fold that flap and then adhere it so that my card will open and close nicely. Then I'll do the same thing to the other side of the card. So now both of my flaps have been decorated and run from the inside to the outside of the card. Now the part that's left is to decorate the front and the inside of your card. 
cut a white piece of cardstock to fit inside that panel and you can see that I've left a little border around the outside edge on the original card I made I left a bigger border at the top because I wanted it to be completely covered by the leaves and flowers when the card was closed for this card I'm just going to make sure that my leaves pop up a little bit higher than they originally did now I'm just going to decorate my card panel and I'm using Fiesta Blue ink for the water and I'm using Tiara ink for the sun in the corner. I'm just stamping those out and then I'll adhere it to the inside of my card front and I'll be ready to decorate the front of my card. Now if you remember, what are the things that I want to do is I want to find a leaf that will cover the top part of that white cardstock, but I also want it to interlock with another leaf so that the card will close. So that's what I'm doing now is just finding leaves and flowers and arranging them on my card front so that it will close, but also so that it will cover that white inside card panel. Sometimes after I adhere my images, there's a little bit of stickiness on the back from where the tape doesn't get on the cardstock. So I use what I've always called an embossing buddy, which you use for embossing, and it takes that stick right off. It's perfect for this kind of a card where you don't want the sticky to adhere to the layer behind it. Now I'm going to look for an image that will interlock with that leaf so that the card will shut. So I found this flower that I thought was the perfect size and I'm going to adhere that to one side of my flap but not put adhesive on the entire thing so that the leaf will be able to tuck underneath it without getting stuck to the adhesive. Here you can see that the leaf tucks nicely under the flower and it will allow the layers to interlock together very nicely. I've continued to layer flowers onto my card front to fill the front up but not to make it too full and I've also made sure that I've popped up some of the leaves from the top panel so that it'll mostly cover that white card stock underneath. And here is the finished card. Here is it opened up and then again when it's closed. Thank you so much for joining me today on Jen's Ink Spot. For a product list or for more information, click on Show More in the description under this video. Thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great day.